Hi everyone. The Tolenstone Gmail account is usually a pretty quiet place. I get a few notes and questions from fans of the channel, but occasionally something stranger will show up, like this email. <clears throat> hey man, I love your time travel videos. Good start. I recently purchased a time machine on eBay. I was skeptical at first, but after several experiments involving my gerbil, Gerald, I have confirmed that the device is fully operational. I'm almost ready for my trip to ancient Rome. I've packed my toga and toothbrush, and even hopped into the future to buy a copy of your book. I like this guy's style. But before I activate my time machine, I want to ask you a quick question. I have this fantasy about driving a chariot in the Circus Maximus. I've never ridden a horse or anything, but I'm pretty good at Mario Kart, so I think I'll be okay. Do you have any suggestions for me before I hit the track in ancient Rome? This latest episode of My Time Traveler's Guide to Ancient Rome will discuss how not to die in the Circus Maximus. Let me just say at the outset that, if you try to race in the Circus Maximus, or anywhere else, with no experience of driving a chariot, you will almost certainly die. Moved, however, by some combination of duty and morbid curiosity, and secure in the knowledge that I am not legally responsible for anything that happens to you in the past, I can offer some advice. Today, the Circus Maximus is little more than a dusty valley in the heart of Rome. But 2,000 years ago, it was the largest entertainment venue on the face of the planet, with seats for more than 150,000 spectators, cheering and chatting, betting and brawling, as the chariots rattled by below. If you're really committed to driving one of those chariots, the first thing you have to do is choose a faction. The races at the Circus Maximus were organized by four factions, or racing teams, each named for its signature color. The reds, the whites, the blues, and the greens. The blues and the greens were always the most popular, and the emperors tended to prefer the greens. Caracalla, however, was a fan of the blues, and occasionally murdered green charioteers. So, if you visit during his reign, keep that in mind. Most drivers in the circus began as slaves, though some were poor freemen from the provinces. Slave or free, they were carefully vetted and underwent a long training process before their first race. As a random stranger with no driving experience, you'll never be allowed to actually join a faction. But you might be able to bribe your way onto the track with well-chosen gifts to the right officials. If you've never driven a chariot before, the learning curve will be steep. Racing chariots were minimalist contraptions, consisting of little more than a narrow platform with low walls. Most drivers wrapped the reins around their waists, which allowed them to control their horses with body weight. Unfortunately, this meant that, in the case of an accident, drivers were often unable to escape the reins and were dragged to their deaths. So you may just want to hold the reins. Choose your horses carefully. The best horses were thought to come from stud farms in Spain and North Africa, but you should be more interested in your horses' ages than in their pedigrees. Unlike modern thoroughbreds, Roman horses often raced for many years. The most experienced were relatively easy to manage. At least once, in fact, a team of veteran horses won a race after their driver fell out of his chariot. Though the vast majority of the charioteers of the Circus Maximus drove four-horse teams, you'll want to stick with the two-horse teams used to train novices, which were much easier to handle. There were 24 races on a typical day at the circus. Each followed the same pattern. The chariots lined up behind the gates, which were staggered to minimize the advantage of any starting position. The emperor, or presiding official, dropped a purple cloth. The opening mechanism was triggered, and the horses exploded from the gates. Up to the first turn, the chariots had to stay in their starting lanes. Past that point, it was a seven-lap, breakneck, free-for-all. You'll want to avoid the first race of the day, when the horses were often still skittish from the opening procession. 
you'll also want to avoid any race with a full field of 12 chariots, since more chariots means more drivers who can and will collide with you. If possible, drive in one of the smaller races with only four chariots, ideally against other novices, who will still run into you, but not quite as hard. Roman charioteers drove to win, slamming into each other's chariots, and constantly jockeying for best position. Their maneuvering was especially complex when the factions fielded multiple chariots, and teammates worked together to block rivals while their fastest chariot surged to victory. All of this, of course, is way beyond your skill level, so you should hang behind the pack and try to keep out of the way. You'll have to be especially careful around the turns. On the short ends of the circus, drivers cut as closely as they dared to the stone barrier, trying to save precious seconds and block their rivals. But if they hugged the barrier too closely, they ran the risk of crashing. Crashes were a part of the experience at the Circus Maximus. The Romans called them naufragia, shipwrecks, and cheered or mourned them, depending on whether the driver involved belonged to their faction. Any chariot that collided with another, or hit the barrier at full speed, could be smashed into splinters, leaving the driver, still tied to the reins, desperately trying to cut himself free as he was dragged behind his horses. He would only live to drive another day if he was quick with his belt knife, and lucky enough to avoid the hooves and wheels of his rival's chariots. As I said, you should just stay away from the barrier. But if you manage to hit it anyway, or tumble out of your chariot from sheer incompetence, remember, crash, slash, and dash. If you crash, slash your reins, and dash to safety. If you aren't trampled, stagger back to the headquarters of your faction, where your wounds will be plastered with Bordung. Look, buddy, we all have our fantasies about what we'd do in ancient Rome. Yours is far from the worst I've heard. But, as I've hopefully made clear with this video, driving a chariot in the Circus Maximus just isn't a good idea. Instead, I encourage you to time travel the safe way, by reading my book, Naked Statues, Fat Gladiators, and War Elephants, Frequently Asked Questions About the Ancient Greeks and Romans. Stay tuned for future videos, thanks very much for watching this one, and please, don't enter any chariot races unless you know what you're doing.